Greetings. Welcome back to the broadcast. Thanks for joining me this morning. I'm Sean. Website is scriptureandprophecy.com. Today we're resuming our study in the Gospel according to John. And uh, today it's this, the main theme is just this discourse between Jesus and the Jews, this going back and forth and going back and forth. Uh, it does start with the story of the woman who was taken in adultery. And then it goes into just a really long discourse a back and forth between Jesus and some of the Jews. One thing that's interesting to note about John is he really focuses on the deity of Christ. Like he really wants to make sure that whoever's reading his account understands that Jesus is fully God. That's why the very beginning he starts with, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then here we have that famous saying here that will end, that actually ends chapter 8, where Jesus says, Before Abraham was, I am, showing the eternality that he possessed. And so John, he just really wants to make sure that everyone understands this principle. The other thing I was thinking this morning is, as we study this, we should just take a moment to recognize and be thankful uh, for the great privilege that we have that most Christians throughout Christian history have not had. Uh, even before Christ, Jews, most Jews didn't have the privilege that we have, and that is to have such great and abundant access to the Word of God. Throughout history, not only was the access very, very limited, but even if you could get access, being able to read it was a limitation. Men died and were burned to death and tortured for translating it out of Latin into English. Uh, just the, 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 the sacrifices that were made just so you can read it in your own language. And that goes for people have paid the price to get the word out through all the world. And so we live in a very unique time in history. And as a result, I think we are so much the more without excuse. Because we have such great access. We can't plead ignorance. And so chew on that a little bit today. Think about how grateful we should all be to have these tools, to have this word so easily accessible for us. And let's let it renew our minds and speak to us this morning. I'm reading from the King James Bible, the Gospel according to John, chapter 8. Let's begin. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives. And early in the morning he came again unto the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down, and he taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman, taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, but that uh, they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground, as though he'd heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself, and he said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast the stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. And when Jesus had lifted, himself, lifted up himself, and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No, my Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. 
Please note, something important to pay attention to that gets overlooked whenever this story is brought up is Jesus doesn't just forgive her. And by the way, the Son of Man has the authority to forgive sin, right? He's not, he's not not obeying the commandments of Moses. He is the Son of Man. He has the authority to forgive sin. He forgives sin, but he says this to her. Go and sin no more. This happens multiple times when you see Jesus either do a miracle, or in this case, he's forgiving a sin. He tells them to go and sin no more. It's accompanied with a, an action. Go do this and stop doing that. It seems like so often in modern Christianity, we only focus on, oh, look, he just forgave her, as if to say that adultery is okay. That is not what happened. He told her and warned her not to continue in her sin. There's other instances when he'll heal someone. He says, now go and sin no more, lest something worse happens to you. Right? Actions matter. Verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself? Thy record is not true. Jesus answered, and he said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For, not, for I know whence I came, and whither I go, but ye cannot tell me whence I come, and whither I go. Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. And yet if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I am the Father that sent me. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. Then said they unto him, Where is thy father? And Jesus answered, Ye neither know me nor my father. If you had known me, you should have known my father also. Please note, Jesus makes this point. This isn't the only time we see this account where in order to know the Father, you have to know Him. If you reject Him, you reject the Father. You cannot claim to know the Father if you do not know Him. It doesn't matter what your bloodline is. You either know Christ or you don't. Verse 20, These words spake Jesus in the treasury, as He taught them the temple, and no man laid hands on Him, for His hour was not yet come. Then said Jesus again to them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whither I go, you cannot come. Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself? Because he saith, Whither I go, you cannot come. And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins, for if you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sins. Please note, again, he's being very clear. If you don't acknowledge me as he, meaning if you don't acknowledge me as Messiah, as Son of God, you will die in your sins. Plain and simple. Verse 25. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? And Jesus said unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. And they, under, they understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me, the Father hath not left me alone. For I do always those things that please him. So Jesus is saying, when you lift me up, they don't know what he's talking about, but he's referring to when the day comes that they put him on the cross and he's raised up, just like the serpent was raised up in Moses' day. 
so the Son of Man must be lifted up. He's saying, when you raise me up, then you're going to realize who I am. Verse 30. And he spake these words. Many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed, and shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? It's important to understand something, and this is an argument that I make with people who kind of have the it's okay to sin attitude, right? Like, who cares? You know, my sins are paid for. I can do what I want. Jesus didn't come to set you free to sin. Listen to what I'm saying. Jesus has not set you free to sin or so that you can sin. He sets you free from sin, the bondage and power of sin. That is what he's freed you from. Did you hear what I just said? Because so many people think they have a license to sin. Wrong. What are we seeing over and over? He just said, if, what's if mean? It means either or. If you obey... If you do the things I've said, you are my disciple. So what does that mean? If you do not do the things that he said. Think about these things. Right now he's saying, you are in bondage, but I'm here to set you free. And they ask the question, we're the seed of Abraham and we've never been slaves. What are you talking about? Let's continue on. Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say unto you. Whosoever commit the sin is a servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and you do that which you have seen with your father. And they answered, and they said unto him, Abraham is our father. And Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God, this did not Abraham. You do the deeds of your father. And then they said unto, them, unto, unto him, We be not born of fornication, we have one Father, even God. And Jesus saith unto them, If God were your Father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my word? Ye are of your Father, the devil and the lust of your father ye will do he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him when he speaketh a lie he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it and because i tell you the truth you believe me not which of you convinces me of sin and if i say the truth why do you not believe me he that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because you are not of God. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art Samaritan and hast a devil? So he tells them that you're not the seed of Abraham because you don't do the things of Abraham. Abraham can't be your father because you don't do the works of Abraham. right? You, you don't live like him. What was Abraham's greatest thing? God counted unto him righteousness because he was a person of faith. He believed God. They're not believing. They're unbelieving. Jesus is telling them, not only that, they're unbelieving and they're seeking to kill the person who's telling them the truth. So he says, your, your father is not Abraham. Your father is the devil. The devil is a liar. 
when he's everything that comes out of his mouth is a lie he's the father of lies when he speaks a lie he's speaking his own native tongue you're you're his child not abraham's you're the seed of the devil not the seed of abraham and then their response is well you're 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 of the devil <laughs> right that's what they say then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samarian, Samaritan? Of course, they had a horrible view of the Samaritans. And has a devil? And Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and you do dishonor me. And I seek not my own glory. There is one that seeketh and judges. Verily, verily, I say unto you, If a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Then the Jews said unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets and thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? And the prophets are dead. Who makest thou thyself? And Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet, ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say, I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him, and keep his saying, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it, and was glad. Something I want to point out about that is Jesus says that your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Meaning that Abraham, at least on some level understood that the Messiah would come one day, right? Because Jesus is saying, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And of course, that's going to throw the Jews for a real loop because again, it's, Jesus is making himself eternal. Then said the Jews unto him, thou art not yet 50 years old. And hast thou seen Abraham? And Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Then took they up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them. And so he passed by. And that is the end of our study. I want to read just a little paragraph of uh commentary from F.B. Meyer on this little section where Jesus says, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and he bowed not in the truth, because there was no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh his own. For he is a liar, and the father of it. Here's what F.B. Meyer's commentary is on that little section. Godly ancestors... Remember, they're talking about how they've got special privileges because they're the seed of Abraham. Godly ancestors and parents will avail nothing unless we are animated by their spirit and do their works. There were in the old world two families that ran in parallel lines, that of Cain and that of Seth. The Canaanites were citizens of this world and the Sethites were pilgrims of eternal the one family finally reached such a pitch of wickedness that they were swept away by the flood, while the other furnished the world with Enoch that walked with God and Noah who was perfect in his generation. This distinction has continued down the ages and is not only assinuated by these words of our Lord, but by 1 John 3.12 which says, Not as Cain who was of that wicked one and slew his brother, and wherefore slew he him, because his own works were evil, and his brothers were righteous? And again, First John three fifteen, Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and ye know that murderer hath no eternal life abiding in him. In Ephesians 2, 2, which says, Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Those who walk according to the course of this world are practically walking according to the spirit that works disobedience in men's lives. 
it becomes us, then to see to it that we are not deceived. We may never have plunged into such a depth of sin as overwhelmed the men of that generation, and yet, if our hearts are steeped in the love of this world, which is passing away, we betray our own we betray our affinity to evil and not to good, to the devil and not to God. And that's a perfect word for our generation. The world is passing away. You're washing it before your very eyes. Jesus tells that parable of the servant. Keep in mind, he was a servant. Who said in his heart, My master has delayed his coming. And so he goes to drink with the drunkards and beat his servants. He goes back to his sinful ways. The Lord must not be coming. He must be delayed. He goes back to his sinful ways and then the Lord comes back. And it says that his portion was with the unbelievers. The world is passing away. We see it. We see the decay. And yet so many Christians continue to walk in the worldly lust. Continue to walk in sin. Have no interest in the appearing of Messiah. They make excuses. May we never, here's what F.B. Meyer said, may we never be plunged into such depths of sin as overwhelmed the men of that generation, and yet if our hearts are steeped in love with this world, which is passing away, we betray our affinity to evil and not to good, to the devil and not to God. And he ends with Ephesians 2.2, 2, wherein in time past you walked according to the curses of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, and the spirit now worketh in the children of disobedience. Who's your father? That's what Jesus is really asking these people. Is your father God? Or is your father the devil because all you want to do is fulfill the lust of your own heart? I pray in the powerful name of Jesus that you've been blessed this morning, that your hearts have been pierced, and I pray that it causes you to draw all the more closely to God and to his son Jesus. Peace and grace be with all of you, and until next time, God bless.